Today we're going to look at two smartphones that I think are in contention to be the best smartphone under £400, Nothing's Phone 1 and Google's Pixel 6a. These two phones have a very different background. You've got the hugely hyped up Phone 1, the first smartphone released by a new company that, until now, we really had no idea what to expect in terms of real-world performance. Contrast this with the Pixel 6a, which history would tell us is a phone that takes all of the best parts of the Pixel 6 and offers them in a more affordable package. We normally know what to expect with the A series, and typically they've been very easy to recommend to most people. But this year things are a bit different, and actually the regular Pixel 6 might still be the better choice. So this review is of course going to focus on an in-depth look at the differences between Phone 1 and the Pixel 6a, and we'll be crowning the £399 smartphone champion. But I'll also point out how the 6a is different from the regular 6, because even if the 6a is the winner, I think some of you might still want to go for the 6 instead. Nothing breaks onto the smartphone scene trying to stand out from the crowd, and the phone's flat square boxes definitely make for a unique unboxing experience. The overall presentation is excellent, and they've even stamped their mark on accessories like this cool transparent SIM ejector tool. Aside from this we have the usual paperwork, and a USB-C to C charging cable. For the Pixel 6a it's a much more familiar affair with that standard rectangular box. Inside you'll find the phone itself, the SIM ejector tool and usual paperwork, and finally the USB-C charging cable but Google were kind enough to include an A to C adapter for those who might need it. But let's get into the phone design, which is arguably the most fundamental difference separating these two phones. We'll start with the Pixel 6a, which copies the 6's now iconic camera bar and the two-tone finish, but this time around the camera bump is much thinner, both in height, but especially in how much less it sticks out from the back of the phone, so that's a nice improvement. It has Gorilla Glass 3 on the front and a composite plastic back, so it takes a durability hit compared to the regular Pixel 6's Victor's glass design. In fairness though, this might be the most premium plastic I've ever felt, and it's pretty tough to tell the difference from glass, plus using a phone case should negate those durability differences anyway. The 6a comes in chalk white, charcoal black and sage green, and as Android phones go this is a pretty nice design. But Nothing's Phone 1 definitely takes the win for the design category, and the transparent glass that shows off the inside of the phone looks absolutely awesome. There's a lot of detail, texture and even some depth here, and I honestly can't decide if this looks better in black or white. Let me know in the comments what you think. It uses a tougher Gorilla Glass 5 on both the front and back, but it loses out on the Pixel's excellent IP67 water resistance rating. Phone 1 only offers an IP53 rating, so it's barely even splash proof whilst you could submerge your Pixel underwater, so that was quite disappointing and you're going to have to be extra careful with it if you're caught out in the rain. With its rounded off corners, flat sides and the camera placement, this design has definitely been inspired by Apple's iPhone 12, and it even feels very similar in the hand. But the way nothing really stands out from the crowd is with the Glyph interface. This is an array of over 900 individual LEDs, and these can display different patterns based on different alerts. For example, you can use this to sync up with different ringtones, each one carrying a unique lighting pattern. But it can also be used for more subtle effects, like a charging indicator when you plug the cable in. There's a red LED indicator when you're shooting video. It can serve as a feedback indicator when you're using Hey Google and you can also use it as a softer camera light as opposed to the typical flash. So there are a couple of genuinely useful features, but it's mostly just a design to make this phone stand out from the crowd, which it definitely achieves. It's undeniably cool, in fact this entire phone design is the coolest I've seen for a smartphone in a long time, and that alone may seriously be the best reason to buy it. But it's quite limited in how much you can customise it, and ultimately, the problem with it is that it relies on you keeping your phone face down. I normally have my phone in my pocket or I'll lay it phone case down, and if I were going caseless then I'd at least prioritise protecting the screen, plus you'll still need to flip the phone over to see what your notification is anyway. I'm sure I'm not the only one who would want to see a software update where you could choose a specific LED pattern or colour based on the notification, that would be much more useful. So its practicality in real world use is questionable, and you probably won't get to enjoy the lights as much as you might think, especially if you'll be using a phone case. Even without the Glyph interface though, the Phone 1 design is definitely cooler and much more interesting than the Pixel 6a. In terms of size, the Phone 1 is a noticeably bigger phone that also feels heavier in the hand. As a result, the Pixel feels more comfortable to hold, and actually this relatively small smartphone is easier to use because of its smaller size, especially with its one-handed mode, which the Phone 1 doesn't offer. Against the larger Pixel 6, you realise how much nicer the 6a is to hold, and I think this has an excellent balance of screen and phone size. It makes things like typing easier, and also the haptic feedback you get feels much more premium too. 
Nothing's vibrations are unusually bright, slightly hollow, and actually quite loud, even when your phone is in silent mode. But contrast this with nothing's heavier glass and metal body, and actually Phone One does feel like a more premium device overall. As I said, it's just like an iPhone, and by no mistake either. I think the button placement is better too, with the volume and power buttons on opposite sides, which leads to fewer accidental presses. You can unlock the phones with the under-display optical fingerprint scanners, which were generally reliable, though perhaps a fraction quicker on Phone One. Nothing also offers a face unlock alternative, but at least the 6A has improved massively on the buggy fingerprint scanner on the regular Pixel 6, though the latest Android update has helped that a little. In terms of the displays though, the win has to go to Nothing's Phone 1. The 6A has a smaller 6.1 inches compared to Nothing's 6.55 inches, so there's a fairly substantial difference in the screen size. Immediately, I think it wins on appearance, especially against the 6A's relatively chunky and asymmetrical bezels, though I do prefer a centrally placed hole punch as opposed to that corner placement, especially for selfie takers where the angle can look a bit strange. These are both flat displays too, which is great to see, but spec-wise, Nothing's Phone 1 really outperforms the 6A. They're both 1080p displays with HDR support, but Nothing's 120Hz high refresh rate is far superior to the Pixel's 60Hz. You'd expect Phone 1 to be far smoother, and it really is. The difference is night and day. But I didn't expect the 6A's 60Hz to be so choppy. It's bad even for a 60Hz phone. Against the 90Hz Pixel 6, you can immediately see the difference, though it may actually be tough to tell in this lower frame rate YouTube video. But if there was one reason above all else to get the regular 6 over the 6A, the display would be it. I think that applies to Phone 1 as well, because navigating the phone feels so much nicer compared to the Pixel, and far more responsive too, especially with that 240Hz touch sampling rate. Colours were generally warmer with Nothing's Phone 1, and slightly more accurate and contrasty with the Pixel, though the 6A did also show some off-axis colour shifting, which I didn't see on Phone 1. In terms of brightness though, it's a bit of a weird one. Setting both phones to max brightness, the 6A appears to have a slight edge, but it's also far dimmer at more typical brightness levels, like here where both phones are set to 60%. Outdoors, the 6A becomes really tough to view in bright sunlight, and Phone 1 was way more visible. So combining this with the larger screen, higher refresh rates, and higher screen to body ratio, the overall display experience is much better on Phone 1. Scrolling is smoother, and the movie viewing experience is superior as well. If you like to listen with your phone speakers though, Phone 1 may disappoint you because it has terribly imbalanced stereo separation, the top speaker is very quiet compared to the bottom ones, even after the latest software updates. They're slightly louder overall than the Pixel, but the experience is still a lot better on the 6A because of the much better balance. Moving on to the software experience, there's actually very little in it. Nothing OS is very close to stock Android, a clean interface with no bloatware, and essentially just some cosmetic tweaks like the custom fonts, Nothing's own camera app, and of course the Glyph interface controls too. It's lacking somewhat in customization compared to something like One UI for Samsung phones, but so is the 6A. The Pixel is of course using stock Android, which is my personal favourite because I like that clean OS experience. But in this instance, I actually prefer Android on Nothing's Phone 1 because of how much smoother it is to navigate. The phones are close enough in terms of software that the display ultimately dictates the overall experience, which feels faster on Phone 1 thanks to the high refresh rate. You get the occasional delay with opening apps to remind you that this isn't a flagship phone with a flagship processor inside, the same as on the 6A. So this doesn't rival the performance of the iPhone SE, but for an Android phone at this price, the experience is super fast. The Pixel 6 Egg has a couple of exclusive Google features, like call screening, but the best of those is Android updates. Not only will you get those updates first, for instance the Pixel already has access to Android 13, but you also get longer support. Nothing guarantees 3 years of Android updates and 4 for security, compared to 5 for both on the Pixel 6a, so longevity is important to consider too. It was pleasing to see Nothing address a number of bugs at launch, with a software patch arriving only a couple of weeks later. It significantly improved the phone compared to the launch version, but we'll have to see how frequently updates continue going forwards. Powering these phones is a Snapdragon 778G Plus in Nothing's Phone 1, whereas the 6A gets the same Tensor chip that Google puts in its flagship 6 Pro. You can see that Phone 1 outspecs the Pixel for RAM, and even has a higher 12GB of RAM option that comes with double the storage. 
So for options, nothing wins. And certainly the storage may be an important factor, given that neither phone has an SD card slot option. Both phones come equipped with 5G support and Bluetooth 5.2, but a couple of bonuses for the Pixel 6a are eSIM support and also Wi-Fi 6e instead of Wi-Fi 6. Looking at the benchmarks, the Pixel only takes a marginal lead for the CPU test, but when you move on to the graphics testing, it pulls miles ahead. Stress testing these phones for the more intensive tasks like video editing or gaming, you see that the 6a opens up a substantial gap over Phone 1, and actually on paper, the Pixel 6a is one of the best performing Android phones at this price. Interestingly, you can see that over time, the 6a really starts to drop off in performance. I mean, just look at those stability scores. So this is something to bear in mind for longer gameplay sessions. Thermal throttling is a potential factor, but I found that both of these phones get pretty hot with intensive tasks and when charging. Typically, I found that nothing's bigger and faster display offset those performance differences anyway. So things like gaming, movie watching, and even simple social media browsing were more enjoyable on phone one. So the 6a is still miles ahead on paper, but in real world use, you don't notice as much of a gap with things like load times or even frame rates in games. What you definitely will notice is the power efficiency, and the 6a is also the winner when it comes to battery life. The first thing I should say is that the battery life is only okay for these two phones. They'll get you through a full day, but probably not anymore, and maybe only just that if you use them quite heavily. The battery sizes are fairly similar, but it's the efficiency of the Tensor chip that means the Pixel pulls ahead. I initially thought that nothing's high refresh rate was to blame, but with tasks that don't engage the high refresh rate, such as YouTube videos, when the screen is off, or simply when turning off 120Hz altogether, you'll still see the battery drop at the same rate. I did some in-depth testing for social media apps, gaming, testing the camera, using both phones identically, and actually the batteries tended to drop at the same rate. But in standby mode, even when you turn off the always-on display, nothing's phone one drains much faster. Having tested the phones over the course of the last month, I found you'll typically get more juice out of the Pixel, and I wouldn't be surprised to see this improve over time either. When it comes to charging though, it's an entirely different story. Phone 1 offers 33 watt fast charging compared to the 6a's 18 watts, and a full charge is almost an hour quicker as a result, so that's a pretty huge difference. Nothing also offers wireless charging where the Pixel 6a doesn't, which incidentally is another downgrade from the Pixel 6, which does. Let's talk now about the cameras. Both phones have a selfie, main, and ultra wide lens, and we know the Pixel is likely to perform well here because, well, it's a Pixel. Google's image processing is arguably the best on any phone, but the phone is also using a very old sensor compared to the Phone 1. It's the same main sensor as on the Pixel 2 from back in 2017, and when you compare the specs side by side, the numbers would certainly favour nothing's Phone 1. Overall though, the Pixel still emerges as the clear camera winner, and there were some consistent trends that I saw with photos. For instance, the 6a showed more accurate colours, higher saturation and contrast, better sharpness and detail, despite Phone 1 having the higher megapixel count, and also better handling of HDR. So really, across the board, the 6a had the better all-round performance. Phone 1 would often crush shadows, an image processing style we've seen before in OnePlus phones, so that's not really surprising. The Pixel, on the other hand, tends to keep a lot more of that shadow detail. Detail and sharpness in general was much better with the 6a though, and you can really see this when you zoom in. Nothing's Phone 1 shots were actually unusually soft, which is something I saw in essentially all photos taken on the main lens. The problem is really amplified when you try to zoom in though, even at just 2x zoom. Neither phone has a telephoto lens, and the zoom performance isn't great with either one, but there's a night and day difference between the phones when it comes to zoom, where the 6a is miles ahead with its super res zoom. It maxes out at only 7x, where pictures are pretty terrible. Phone 1 can extend this to 20x, but the quality really isn't usable anyway. Google does tend to over-edit the saturation and contrast, but it definitely creates this more vibrant and striking look, which is part of why the Pixel's camera is so popular. Nothing shot with its more muted colour palette is actually closer to the real life scene, which some people prefer, so that's a key difference worth pointing out. Generally I preferred how Google's software brings its images to life though, and nothing's newer hardware isn't enough to overcome the Pixel superior image processing. Here's an example of Google's better colour accuracy, whereas nothing tends to add a magenta hue to images, so they're more pink than in real life. And you can see here the 6a's better HDR performance. The phone one would often show blown out highlights, especially in bright conditions. Zooming in, things get much worse for nothing. The blacks suddenly get this weird colour change, and there's again the obvious HDR and detail difference. What's interesting though is that the ultra-wide lens on the Phone 1 is actually pretty good, and much closer in performance to the Pixel 6a. The Pixel is still ahead, but you don't have that heavy softening like you do on Nothing's main lens. The angle is quite a lot wider than on the 6a as well, points if you know who lives here by the way, but the colours are much more washed out with the ultra-wide lens especially. 
Still, in a lot of situations, it actually performs really well. You can see here nothing's wild inconsistency between the two lenses and even zooming in slightly. So the Pixel still has the upper hand across both lenses, and especially for the consistency between them. For those wondering about the 50 megapixels on Phone 1, there's a separate mode in the camera app you can enable to take those high-res images. But for the most part, this didn't really seem to make much of a difference, and certainly you need to zoom in a lot to tell any difference anyway. With certain close-up subjects, you can see the improvement, and this does close the gap on the Pixel in terms of detail and sharpness. I find the Pixel overly stylized for pets as well actually, but I still don't think nothing's high-res mode is worth the larger file size. You also lose out on zoom in HDR processing with high-res mode, which nothing struggles with anyway. Plus, this still doesn't beat the overall image quality offered by the 6A. I mean, just look at how much more shadow detail is shown by the Pixel. For those wondering about how the 6A's camera compares to the regular Pixel 6, I can tell you that the performance is extremely similar, and close enough that the camera shouldn't be a deal-breaker. Remember that both phones have Google's Tensor chip inside, so there shouldn't be any differences in processing. They also have the same ultra-wide and selfie lenses, so it's really just that main 50 megapixel lens on the 6 that's different. Unlike Nothing's Phone 1, there's no separate high-res mode to take 50 megapixel photos. The Pixel 6 instead uses pixel binning to produce 12 megapixel photos just like the 6A, and in most situations, it's tough to tell the difference. You may notice a slightly more blurred background on close-up subjects due to the 6's larger sensor. The 6 has motion mode, where the 6A doesn't. And sometimes when you look closely, you can spot the benefit of pixel binning giving slightly more detail. So for most situations, there's not much in it. It's mainly in low light, where the 6 has an advantage. That larger sensor lets in more light, and nighttime shots were generally brighter, sharper, and less noisy on the 6. The laser sensor gives faster autofocus too, so you will notice the improvement in low light situations. But as for how Nothing's Phone 1 compares to the 6A with low light, I was quite surprised to find that there was actually no clear winner. Typically the pixel shots were brighter and slightly less noisy, and sometimes the colours will be more accurate too. But on other occasions, it's the Phone 1 that shows the more realistic colours and a much sharper image. Some of the typical processing differences carry over too, like Nothing's darker shadows, as you can see here with Lily's nose and the trees in the background. But Nothing's image here is also sharper and has the better colours, so the two phones really do fluctuate in low-light performance. For the portrait mode, there's quite a stark difference, with the 6A punching in much closer to the subject and also blurring the background much more to create greater separation. The portrait effect is much more subtle with Phone 1, so you need to physically create distance from the subject if you want more of a blurred background. Generally, the Pixel's cutout was a bit more accurate, the colour temperature was much warmer, and again the phone can oversharpen a little. So the 6A offers a much more striking, saturated, and obvious portrait effect, whereas Nothing offers a more subtle approach, which can often work better, and is typically closer to the real-life scene. When it comes to video, the 6A is simply miles ahead in quality, and Nothing's Phone 1, which you're seeing here, suffers from quite a few issues. You may be able to spot those stuttering issues, as well as some strange and sudden exposure changes. Stability is an issue too, as well as smoothness, and I ran into a lot of issues as soon as I tried to move the camera. Switching over to the Pixel, you should immediately notice the improvement in stability. Not just in terms of the smoothness, but you don't have those stuttering issues either. The 6A can also record in 4K at 60 frames per second, compared to 30 on the Phone 1, so that's a big advantage too. Google does tend to oversaturate and warm up the colours, so this is perhaps less realistic than on Phone 1, but certainly the overall quality is much better. Here you can see how soft Nothing's video can be, again because there's no close-up subject, so that softening issue can affect video too but also notice the lens glare issue, which you don't see on the 6A. If you keep the phone relatively still, you'll get much better results, and actually Nothing's video does look much closer to the real-life scene here, against the 6A's warm and over-sharpened clip. But overall, the Pixel 6A is still the winner when it comes to video quality. And finally, with the front cameras, this is one camera aspect where Nothing actually performs better. The 16 megapixel lens delivers sharper selfies with a brighter exposure that typically showed more realistic colours as well. In this lower light shot, you can see the exposure difference isn't always quite as drastic, and you may also be able to spot the noise affecting nothing shot, so the pixel selfies were sometimes cleaner. These differences carry over to the portrait mode as well, where, just like with the rear cameras, the pixel blurs the background much more and usually has a sharper cutout too. But in general, I still prefer the front camera shots from the Phone 1. As for the selfie video, the pixel is the clear winner. Both phones can record in up to 1080p 30, and the quality isn't amazing with either one. But the Pixel's video is smoother, you can see the HDR is far better, and even though Nothing's video is sharper, you can't really see this because of how much it crushes the shadows. 
On the whole, both cameras really impressed me for this sub £400 price bracket. The Pixel 6a was the clear overall winner, but both should be perfectly good enough for most people. Sure, there's quite a step up with the latest flagships, especially when it comes to zoom, but those who really want the very best camera performance can't expect to get that from phones at this price point. The 6a probably has the very best camera at this price, but nothing's phone 1 is a strong performer too. So which of these two phones should you actually buy? Well first of all, we know that both start at £399, and there's only one model for the Pixel 6a, whilst nothing offers higher RAM and storage options as well. But availability is the first thing you should consider, because Phone 1 is not getting a US release, so your choices may be limited. But as for which phone is better, well, it all comes down to the specific factors you personally prioritise. Both phones are solid all-rounders, two of the best at this price point, and there's nothing glaringly obvious that should stop you from buying either one. But they certainly each have a major strength. For the Pixel, it is of course that fantastic camera. You really won't find anything better at this price, so if the camera is important to you, then the 6a is definitely the way to go. Its smaller size makes it easier and more comfortable to use, especially if you have smaller hands. It offers slightly better battery life too, and comes with the security of day one updates and a greater number of years of support, important for those using the phone long term. But if you want something a bit more eye-catching, a phone with a truly unique and awesome design, that's what Phone 1 is all about. It's different and fun, and as strange as that might sound to be a good enough reason to buy a phone, when you're paying what's now considered to be a budget to mid-range price, you already know you're going to have to compromise with the specs. These aren't flagship phones, and you're paying less because of it. So why not indulge in the appearance of a phone for a change and say, yeah, it isn't perfect, but it's also the best looking smartphone right now. It's not all style over substance either. That 120Hz screen is far superior to the Pixel's. It has a premium build quality, and the convenience of wireless charging and much quicker fast charging, which you could argue offsets the poorer battery life. I also want to point out the Pixel 6a versus 6 issue, because normally the A series is easy to recommend over the price jump needed to get the main series phone. But this year it's different, and right now the Pixel 6 is only £75 or just $50 more expensive than the 6a, and that's direct from the Google Store, so it may be even cheaper elsewhere. For that price jump, I think it easily justifies what's actually quite a big upgrade. You get a tougher glass body, higher RAM and storage options, faster charging and wireless charging, and best of all, a smooth 90Hz display. That for me is the deal breaker, and given how choppy the 6A's display is, I would say that this alone makes it hard to justify over the regular 6. For me the display lets down the Pixel 6a, and it's ultimately the reason why I'd place nothing's phone one ahead of it, which for me is the £399 smartphone champion. Nothing makes the best looking true wireless earbuds on the market, and whilst the earbuds overall are just pretty decent, the design and aesthetics are definitely the USP. That's pretty much the same deal with Phone 1 as well, but I do think there is enough of a smartphone here backing up that cool design to justify the price tag. Let me know in the comments though what you think about these phones, or if you think there's a better phone for £399 right now. I was quite surprised with the results and didn't expect Phone 1 to perform so well, but I want to hear from you all as well. Give this video a like if you found it helpful, and subscribe and hit the notification bell to see more content like this. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.